Everybody, welcome back to another very exciting Adobe Live. I am your host, Asus Ramirez. How's it going today? It's wonderful to be here with you this rainy um, Tuesday morning here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Let me know where you're watching from. It's good to see a lot of familiar faces in the chat already. Tim, Clarissa, Steve, General Kenobi, thank you so much for joining me. I hope everybody is having a wonderful time. During this Photoshop bootcamp, we're going to talk about creating custom brushes for masking, for special effects, for pretty much anything you like. So we are going to go through a deep dive of the brushes panel inside of Photoshop. So I hope that you have um, a good time and that you learn a lot in this stream. I see that we have Susan from London. Good to see you, Susan. Hey, Cody Bear. Good to see you in the chat as well. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. Um, as usual, I have a lot that I want to cover. It's going to be a jam-packed session. You might want to go back and give it a second watch. So why don't we jump right into my screen and we're going to be right inside of Photoshop. We're going to start with this image. And actually, you know what? Never mind. Before we start with this image, I'm just going to create a white layer because I assume that not everybody here is an expert with brushes so i do want to create a baseline so that we all understand what a photoshop brush is and then we can talk about customizing brushes to create all sorts of cool things inside of photoshop so <clears throat> excuse me so the first thing is what is a photoshop brush well if you go into the tools bar you'll see the brush tool by the way the brush tool is not the only tool in photoshop that uses brush tips uh tools like the clone stem tool and other tools also allow you to select, select different brush tips from the drop down menu here in the options bar. But for the purposes of this stream, we're only going to focus on the brush tool. So here's the brush tool. You go into the options bar and you click on it and you can now start painting with your foreground color, which is set down here right below this banana. You probably don't have a, a banana tool. I like to add a banana to my toolbar. If somebody reminds me later, I'll show you how to get that banana in there. Um, but the point is that right below that, you'll see your foreground color and your background color. Currently, my foreground color is set to black. The default colors are, and I'm sorry, my currently my foreground color is set to white. The default color is black and the default background color is white. So these are flipped. So you can flip those by tapping on the X key on the keyboard. See how I'm flipping those as I tap on the X key. And if you want the default colors, maybe you have red as your foreground color and you know blue as your background color and you want to go back to the default colors which are black and white you can press the d key on the keyboard or you can click on the icon that's here on the bottom left and once again to go into the brush tool you can click on the brush tool icon here in the toolbar or press the b key on the keyboard and that allows you to paint with that brush pretty cool right well Photoshop gives you a whole lot more than that. If you go into the drop down here by clicking on this down pointing arrow, you can see all the brushes that Photoshop comes with and additional brushes that you can install. For By default, the soft round brush um, gives you a size and hardness. So when you increase the size, you can imagine what that, hap uh, what that will do. That will increase the brush tip size. You can see the preview increasing size as I make my brush tip larger and smaller. I'm using a keyboard shortcut. I'm old school. I use the bracket keys on the keyboard to increase or decrease my brush size. But um, newer users prefer the, and I don't even know it off the top of my head, to be honest with you, like I rarely use it. Somebody in the chat is probably going to tell me, like, how can you not know? If you hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and right click, you can um, increase or decrease your brush size by going left and right and the hardness by going up and down. Like I said, I'm old school. I don't like the new keyboard shortcut. I prefer what we had in the past, which is the bracket keys next to the letter P in North American keyboards. So left and right bracket to increase and decrease brush size and to increase and decrease hardness, you can use the shift key and those bracket keys. So shift left bracket key makes the brush um, softer shift and right bracket key makes the brush harder and we're talking about the edges soft edge versus hard edge by the way if you're in if you're an adobe lightroom user they call it um softness or feathering it's not hardness it's, it's like the opposite word i think it's um softness if i'm not mistaken in lightroom somebody will correct correct me with that either softness or feathering but the point is is that they don't use the same terminology so increasing in photoshop 
does something different than um, increasing in Lightroom. And by the way, as you heard, there's somebody in my front door, but don't worry, there's somebody else in the house that will get that door. Um, <laughs> excuse me. So those are the principles of how the brush tool works. As I mentioned, all the options are, or not the options, the different brushes that you can select are here. Something that I don't know why Adobe uh, did this, it is very important to know, is that in about Photoshop 2019, 2018 or so, Adobe hid some of the original brushes that were inside of Photoshop for many, many years. And if you want to bring those back, there's a lot of useful brushes in there. You can do so. You can click on this gear icon and go to where it says legacy brushes. When you click on that, you're going to get this option. You can press OK. And what that will do is create a folder at the very bottom of your brushes panel called legacy brushes. Mine has a number two on it because I already enabled it at some point, like right here. There it is, the first one. But it, it, it'll just create another copy. And it has all the original default brushes uh, inside of Photoshop, including one of my favorite brushes called Dune Grass, which is this one here, which was designed by my good friend uh, and Photoshop mentor, Burt Monroy. And you can create grass and it uses some of the settings that we're going to look at to create um, this effect. And this particular brush works with having a mixture between the foreground color and the background color to generate that effect. And you can create something that looks like grass by doing that. But the point is, is that th th uh, those brushes are there. They're hidden. I'm not sure why they're hidden, but you can bring them back if you want. Now that I'm talking about using um, or bringing in brushes that you have access to for free, but they're not right there in front of you. There's another place where you can get brushes for free. If you click on this drop down menu, go back into the gear icon and select get more brushes. This will open up this web page that opened up on my other browser here. Let me, I'm gonna have to move the window over. Um, it'll open up this window. And for some reason, the page didn't load. There it is, it's loading. It opens up this window and it is over a thousand free brushes, ABR files that you can use on your iPad as well if you want. I believe you can also use some on Fresco. Um, yeah, you can use some on Fresco, it says right here. And these packs were created by Cal T. Webster. There's a ton, a ton of brush packs that you can download and experiment with. I like using the concept brushes. Uh, there's a lot of cool things for compositing in there, so you might want to check those out. But there is just a ton of free brushes you can download all for free with your Creative Cloud account. You do have to sign into this page with your Adobe ID. But the point is, it is that you have those two places where you can get more brushes that you already have access to, but they're just not not here in the in the drop down. You can just go in and load them up as you wish. By the way, when you download the ABR brushes from that Adobe website, you'll get an ABR file, which is a type of file that contains brushes. All you do is double click on it and it will install into Photoshop and you can use them it, uh, however you like. Cool. So what else do we need to know about brushes? Well, let me just select this regular brush that we were using earlier, this, this simple brush, and then I'll press D for the default foreground and background color. And I'll click on this button here to bring up the brush settings right here, brush settings. And I got there by clicking on this icon here. And you can also go into window or and select brush settings up to you. And this gives me a lot of control over my brush. We have all these settings here on the left and the properties on the right. For example, the brush tip we talked about size you can see the size look at the preview here this little window gives you a preview of what the adjustment does so we can increase the size right increase decrease we saw that we also looked at hardness see that hardness but there's also something called spacing and what a brush is is just a bunch of little stamps so in this case it's just a circle stamp like so see that just a bunch of little circles but when we uh, decrease the spacing they're so close together that it essentially it draws a line. Or we can spread them far apart and then we just draw these these dots that are going in a line. But that's what spacing allows you to do. Also, we have the roundness. We can click and drag these points together like so. And now we can create 
this effect. See that? And then we can decrease the spacing and I'll just, I, I guess I'll create a new layer and disable that layer. And we can create almost like a calligraphy effect or something like that. The point is, is that you have total control of your brush through this panel. I can also adjust the angle and now it's in a different angle. See that? And I'll make it smaller so that it's easier to see as I'm, as I'm previewing, uh, previewing the brush. Another thing that you can do is use a keyboard shortcut to rotate the brush. Starting in Photoshop 2021, I believe, you can use the keyboard shortcut to rotate the brush. If you tap on the left and right arrow keys on the keyboard, you rotate the brush. So I just tapped on the left arrow key. And now if I tap on the right arrow key a few times, it'll rotate. And when I paint again, it's at a different angle. So that's a super fast keyboard shortcut um, that allows you to rotate the brush. Or you can use the angle rotation here as well in the options bar to rotate the brush. But I just prefer to use the keyboard shortcut because it's the fastest way of rotating the brush without having to go to a panel or the options bar. Another super cool keyboard shortcut that was introduced into Photoshop, I want to say around the same year, 2021, if I'm not mistaken, or 2020. And I'm looking for the right brush to do this with just because it it really helps when, yeah, we'll use this brush. I think this will be the, a good example. Actually, no, I want a better example. Let me see what would be good to show this. I'm just going to go up and I'm just going to go into one of these special effect brushes. Yeah, this will probably be good. We'll use one of these spatter brushes by Kyle T. Webster. So if you're ever, you know, painting in Photoshop like so, and then you made a mistake in the past, you could have gone to the eraser tool, which I don't even know where it is anymore because I, I never use it. There it is, the eraser tool, and then erase. But the problem with doing that is that this breaks the effect that the brush was creating, right? So that doesn't look very good. So you might want to erase with the brush that you were using to get a similar result. If you're an advanced user in the past, what you might have done is gone into the mode here and select clear and clear erases with that same brush tip. See that? See how it's er erasing, but it's using that same pattern. You don't need to go to clear anymore. What you can do now in newer versions of Photoshop is hold down the tilde key. That's the key to the left of the number one and the top left of your keyboard below the escape key. If you hold the tilde key down, it erases with the same brush tip. So it's, it's the same thing as going into the mode menu and selecting clear, but now you can just do it with a keyboard shortcut and it allows you to erase um, just using that particular key. So it's something that I hope that you um, use because it's very, very beneficial when you're drawing or painting or in my case, compositing. I use my brushes mainly for compositing, but I know that we have a, a lot of artists in the chat that use these brushes for all types of artwork. artwork. Um, I see a question in the chat that um, I don't want to get too much into, but I do want to make a brief, 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 brief comment about how to organize brushes. As you, as you can see, I have a ton of brushes. I mean, I have, who knows, a bunch. Luckily now, Photoshop allows you to search for brushes. You see the search bar here. I used it earlier looking for the dune grass brush. Um, you can type for a brush. I mean, this is not necessarily organizing, but it allows you to find things. You can obviously organize them into a group. Or another thing that I recommend is to create a Creative Cloud library and then drag your brushes in there. So if you're working with a brush that you like, you can go into the brushes panel here. And if there's a brush that, that you create and you're super happy with and you want to use it on all kinds of projects, I just recommend clicking and dragging it over into the um, libraries panel and then it'll save your brushes in the li libraries panel you can just have a library of your of your favorite brushes i know i have a hair brush in here somewhere so i can type in hair and when i you see the label here brushes and i can just click on it and then you know use it in my document so that's a way of organizing your brushes that you use most often in a creative cloud library so they're that they're accessible to you from anywhere um but yeah so that was my way of answering that question so let me go back and select this soft round brush. So this whole stream is about custom brushes, right? How do we customize our brushes? As I was mentioning earlier, we have the brush settings and we have all these settings on the left with the properties on the right. And we looked at this particular panel. Um, something that I didn't mention is the flip X and flip Y 
um axes check boxes in other words they just mirror your brush so if you have something on your brush let me see do i have one here it will be super obvious oh, i'm going to create a few brushes a little later on that'll better display this but basically if your brush is facing one way if, if it has uh like for example the dune grass brush let me let me go to the dune grass brush because i can show it with that one dune grass brush so notice that when i paint the grass blades are facing right see that when i paint facing right and i don't know why the flow went down but whatever so when i paint grass is facing right but if i want the grass to face left i can click on flip x and when i paint now it's facing left or if i want the grass blades to be facing down i can click on flip y and then they face down so you can use these flip x and y axes to uh, rotate your not rotate your brush but flip your brush so it faces the other way up or down left or right so those are very important to know then we have access to all these different uh, settings that we're going to look at more in detail with some of the examples that we're going to look at so for example um, I'm just going to disable them all so you can see what the actual brush looks like this brush is just that that's all it is so when you increase the when you add the shape dynamics you can adjust the size jitter so by default they're all the same size right and let me just reduce all the other settings so that you can see by default they're all the same size but you can increase the size jitter so that when you paint they're all random sizes see that some are really really tiny others are really really big so that's what size jitter means and you can control this with your uh, pen pressure sensitive tablet if you have one um, you can also adjust the angle jitter so that they all face a different angle. So if I increase it all the way to 100, when I paint, they will all face a random angle and they will all be a different size. So completely random, like super random. And, and in some cases, that's what, what you might want. In a case like this, I don't really want a completely random angle, maybe just a little bit. So that they're all facing the same way, but not quite the same angle. And when I paint, you get that result. Then we have uh, roundness jitter that in this case, you know, it kind of makes the, the brush a little look, look, like it's, uh, look like it's rounded. And in this case, it really wouldn't help us for much. Another important one is scattering. The scattering here allows you to scatter the brush tip. See how it's scattering it? I'm going to increase it so it's more obvious. I'm just scattering this all over the image. See that? You can scatter this. Um, the count, it just makes more of them. You can make a whole bunch more. See that? Super, super cool. And for now, I'm going to stop there, but we obviously have more options. I don't want to go through all of them just on, on with this brush. I want to create some custom brushes so that you can see that process. But I just wanted to give you a general sense of how this works. I think that one other one that I might... Yeah, the, the other one that I, I should have mentioned, just, just because it's, it's worth knowing, is when you... Let me uncheck scattering. When you paint, you know, it follows that direction. See that? It just doesn't change direction. One other option I re recommend changing is with the angle jitter under control. If you just change it to direction, notice now how it follows the direction that you're going. See the difference between this one and the one that I painted above? So that's the other control I wanted to mention before we move on. Cool. Any questions so far? Awesome. Looks like there's no questions. By the way, just side note, because it's super new, it's like brand new today. So something I should talk about just for a second is Adobe Firefly is out today, which is Adobe's AI image generation tool. Um, you can join the waitlist. You can check it out at firefly.adobe.com. But the reason that I'm bringing this up in this stream is because one of the things that they're talking about, it's not out yet, is text to brush generate brushes for photoshop and fresco from a detailed text description so this is going to be pretty interesting that you can generate brushes from ai brushes based on a text prompt so i'm looking forward to that so i just wanted to give you guys that side note and also let you know that you can go into that website firefly.adobe.com and join the wait list so that you can check it out um check out what's available now and hopefully in the near future see those ai text generated brushes but it'd be kind of cool if you could type in something like you know cloud brush or something and it just generates it for you but until then i'm going to show you how to create a cloud brush because that's one of the examples for today cool so um how can we use brush custom brushes for different things in photoshop one of the things you can use brushes for is masking 
Um, so let me show you how to create a brush for masking. We have this bear here. And of course, we can go into properties and click on remove background. And it will do a pretty, uh, pretty decent job. But unfortunately, you know, the fur is just going to be very difficult to mask, right? It, it just it is what it is. And the AI is not that good yet that it can, you know, create a believable illusion of fur. So what do you do? You can create your own brush to better mask the fur. If you go into file and new, um, you can create a document. I'll just make mine, I don't know, 1080 by 1080. The size, I guess, doesn't really matter as long as it's big enough for the brush that you want to make. And I'm going to go into the curvature pen tool or pen tool. In this case, it doesn't make much of a difference. I'm going to use a shape, a fill with black and no stroke. And I'm just going to click on top, click on the bottom, click on the top again to close that path, and then go in the center, click and drag out. And in this case, the curvature pen tool will probably have been better. So I'll select the curvature pen tool, click and then drag out. There we go. That looks better. And then click and drag out on this side. And there we go. We have a, a nice little hair strand. And that's going to be my hair or fur brush. See that? Very, very simple. There it is. How do we make this into a brush? Well, with a brush, you can have a transparent background or white. White will become transparent with the brush and whatever is black will become the ink. That's the way you can think about it. And then you can go into edit and select define brush preset and you can give your brush a name. So in this case, we can call it fur, hair, whatever you want. Press OK. And now the brush tool is active and that will enable the brush we just made. So when you paint, you'll have your fur. Clearly, this does not work as fur. So we can use the brush settings that we were just looking at to make it look more like fur. So in this case, we're just going to go into the shape dynamics, increase the size jitter so that when we paint, they're not all the same size. And we can maybe adjust the angle a little bit so that they're not all exactly the same angle. And I think this is probably pretty good. And maybe adjust a little bit of scattering, maybe a little bit of count just to, to make it fuller. And that looks pretty good. And of course, you can adjust the settings as much as you want. We can start with that. But this is usually what I do. If I need to create a brush, I'll, I'll get it to where I think it might work. And then I go try it. And if it doesn't work, just adjust it accordingly. And when we go back into this image, what we can do is a couple things. This totally depends on your workflow and, and how you want to do this. But if we were trying to mask this bear out, um, I probably would start with using one of the selection tools, maybe like the object selection tool or remove background, whatever it is. I didn't like how remove background left the right part of the bear. So with the object selection tool, I can actually select the bear. So there you go. That's the difference. And when you click, you get that result. So now I, uh, I can do two things. I can paint directly on top of the bear on a new layer to replicate the fur, or I can paint on the mask to try to use some of the real fur. In this case, we'll do that just to see how it works. But we have an edge. See how we have this edge? I want to bring the mask in so that we don't have an edge. And when we paint in, um, we get more of the fur rather than that edge. By the way, for this example, I'm going to push this further normally uh, than I normally would just so that it's obvious. So try to be a little more subtle in your actual projects. But for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to push it further than I normally would. And what I'm going to do is with the bear selected, I'm going to go into filter other and choose minimum and the minimum filter, minimum and maximum filters allow you to expand and contract the mask and make sure that you select roundness from the drop down. The default is squaredness and the difference is that squaredness gives you whole numbers. So one, two, three, four, five. And if one is not enough and two is too much, then what do you do? You're stuck. But if you change it to roundness you can go with decimal points so you can say something like 1.5 and then you know that is the difference between one and two or whatever 1.7 whatever you want to do so in this case i'm just going to increase the radius and what i'm doing is i'm contracting the mask and you can see when i click on the preview checkbox what i'm doing there I'm removing that fringe that outline and i'm going to remove it as i said more than i normally would just so that it's obvious Oh, my preview was disabled. There we go. Um, again, I'm going to go a little bit further. I probably wouldn't go this far, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I am going further. So there it is. And also, so that things are easier to see, I'm going to create just a solid color background. Control, left bracket key to jump 
the layer to the layer below. I think we talked about it uh, yesterday. Control, right bracket key moves layers up. Control, left bracket key moves layers down. That's the command key on a Mac. And what I'm going to do now is select this bear. And I have the brush that we just created, right? And what I can do now is paint fur back in. See that? But obviously the brush is too big. So I'm going to make my brush smaller. And then when I paint with white, I paint some fur back in. See that? And But the fur is not going the right direction, right? So then now I have to use the uh, arrow key to see if I can get it going the right direction. If I can't, I can use that technique I talked about earlier, which was using the brush tip here and then flipping it like on the X axis. And then when I paint, look at that. Now we've gained some fur going here. Um, I think I, I might have made the hair strand a, a bit a bit too tall so and too skinny. So at this point, I probably, if, if this were a real project, I will go back and make it just a little bit fatter and maybe not as tall, but we'll work with what we have. What I'm going to do now is go back into Shape Dynamics, adjust the angle that we looked at earlier, and change it to direction. And now when I paint, it'll just follow that direction. See that? And obviously I can just keep painting, maybe increase the count or the, yeah, the count might help maybe just to make it fuller. Let's see. Yeah, that, that works better. So, you know, then this is why I contracted the mask so that I can come in and paint the edges and that will look infinitely more realistic than any mask I could make, especially here. I did a really good job in this area. See that, see how that looks so much better than, um, simply creating a mask. And I think that's the biggest secret, um, especially in like the Hollywood industry and movie posters, like a lot of the masking, it's not even that good. It's just the painting that goes on top of that, that makes it look like it's good. A lot of people feel that they should be able to capture every single hair strand with a mask. And in most cases, that's next to impossible. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. But the point is, is that you want to just, you know, try to get this as best as you can. And that's why I contracted the mask. See that? And that looks much, much better. And obviously something that you want to do if this, uh, again, if this were a real project and I was spending more time on it, what I would do is I would disable the mask, hold shift and click on it and kind of look at the original fur and then maybe follow it a little bit, you know, just so that you still have some of that original flow, you know, and I didn't like how I did that. So I probably would do it again and then come back down. And, you know, you get the idea. Just try to follow it as best or as close as possible. And then another trick that I would recommend is maybe I like how I painted the fur, but I'm getting a little bit of that darker background. What you can do is create a new layer, hold control, alt G on Windows, command option G in the Mac. And then with the brush tool, I would select just a regular brush, nothing fancy. Just this regular guy here, the soft brown brush. Hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click to sample a color. And then just paint on those edges just to match the color. And that becomes just a little more realistic on the edges. See that? So that you don't get that darker brown that is part of the original background. But you're still getting the same color of the highlight. And that just makes it look more, more real when you put it up against another background. What will you do for flyaway hair on a person? Very good question, Llama Mama. Um, well, it depends on what you mean, right? Like, what will you do in terms of like painting it in, in terms of selecting it, in terms of selecting it? There's a couple things you can do. Um, if the person is up against a uh, solid color background and there's enough contrast, you can use a channel based selection. If you're talking about painting it in, and that's what we're going to show in one of the following examples. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to take the, the time to do the entire bear just because it's going to take way too long. And actually, let me make sure that I have my time up, my timer up, because I tend to teach to the last very possible second. So um, I don't want to go over. I almost went over yesterday. Anyway, so we have this bear and obviously if, if you can see the result here on the on the left i'm not like I, I, as i said i'm not going to spend time on showing the rest of the bear just because there's no purpose it'll be the same exact thing just following the entire bear um i'm going to get back to that question with fly away hair um in a moment but for now we're going to talk about this puppet which brings up a lot of challenges First of all, the little hair strands here are next to impossible to select. 
and we have depth of field blurring going on here. So it's just very challenging to select. The process would be virtually identical. And a lot of times when you're teaching, I, it's funny because I've, I've shown basically the example that I just showed you with the bear and ineb inevitably somebody will say, well, that's an easy example. What about if it was blurry? What about if this? What about if that? And my answer is always, it's, it's the same thing. It's just more work. Um, so you'll see how something like this is the same thing, just more work. And also, it's, it's almost like teaching math, right? You want to teach like an easy example so people understand the principles. And then those same principles can help you solve complex equations. So think about the bear as a simple example. And then as this um, puppet as a complex equation. But it's the same thing. So we made a mask, right? And like we did before, we'll go into filter, other, minimum. And again, I'm going to push it probably no further than I normally would just for the example. And I'll press OK. And there you go. Now, that same brush is not going to work because the fur or the um, fuzzies here are completely different. So how do we make those? Well, we can come back into our new document here and we can create those fuzzies so I can use the pen tool in this case I'll just have no fill and I will have a stroke and we'll make the stroke probably like three pixels or so and actually we'll use the curvature pen tool all I'm going to do is I'm just going to create my fuzzies see that that's one and I can Create another one here like so, and that's two. And then I can maybe have one more here going, that's three. And you know, I don't know how many we need. We'll, we'll call that good, right? I don't know. So we can just take all these guys, control E on Windows, command E on the Mac to merge them all into one layer. Actually, no, I don't want to merge them. I don't want to merge them, sorry. Control G to put them into a group. If you merge them, they'll connect and I don't want them to connect. And I just kind of want to center them to, to the frame here. And then I'm going to go into edit and choose define brush preset and you know whatever name you want I'll call this one fuzzy and press okay so now when I paint with this fuzzy what I get is this but I want black and I want to make some adjustments I'll make it a little smaller so that we can see by the way one of the reasons that I like to use vectors to create my brushes like in this case and use a large canvas size is so that I can have a giant brush and it just works on everything because if I make something tiny and then I'm working on a project that requires higher resolution and I need to and I make my brush larger you can actually see some pixel uh, pixelation on the brush so I like to have a giant brush so I can make it as small as I need to and it works on larger documents but anyway so I have my little fuzzy here and that doesn't quite look right so I can just use the adjustments that we were working with earlier. So I'll create a new layer and maybe increase the spacing a little bit, shape dynamics. I'll increase the size jitter and definitely jump the angle jitter all the way. So they're all completely different and maybe increase the spacing even more. Maybe some, maybe less, you know, it might, there might be some experimentation. And I think, I think that's probably good maybe scatter them just a tiny little bit okay we'll see we'll see how this works and like i said before you know it's trial and error you can create a brush it might not work just make the adjustments that you think it needs and come back so in this case i'm gonna go super fast but same technique you know just just do this see that and i'm just creating the fussies and they're not going to be identical obviously but the point the point is not to get the same exact little fuzzies the point is to create the illusion that you did a perfect job in the masking not to actually make a perfect mask because the perfect max is, is impossible so create the illusion of a perfect mask rather than creating a perfect mask. and again going super fast here but basically this is how you would do this there we go we'll, we'll call this good right and obviously you know, you can, you know, make, make, make some smaller, go in there and, you know, make some larger and add more detail, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do, but, you know, just spend some time adjusting these edges. Now you might recall that the original image had a lot of fuzzies that were blurry. So what you can do at that point, and I'll do it here, just create a whole bunch of, so that it's easy to see. 
what you can do at this point, and by the way, when you're doing this, you might have to come in and, and really adjust that mask because I have a, a very sharp edge mask. So probably what I would do here is I probably would use, especially in this area, you'll see, um, I would go into the blur tool and just start blurring it, start blurring the edges and start blurring the fuzzies. And then that, that will create that depth of field effect. See that? So see how blurry that is? And I can probably blur it even more, you know? And the original mask that I started here, I probably should have blurred it a bit. So what I would have done actually before painting the fuzz fuzzies, I would have probably blurred the mask a, a little bit just to, to get rid of that hard edge. So just because, you know, I want it to look a little bit better, I guess I'll do that super quick. I'm just going to undo a couple times or even better, go into the history panel and then figure out where I started painting like right here. And before I paint, I can go into filter, blur. And actually, you know what? Just to double check. Yeah, I, I guess I can blur the entire mask. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'll just blur the entire mask about that much. Or maybe more, just so that, again, so that it's obvious. But I don't want that white. There we go. And then come in here and paint my fuzzies. And we'll just work on this corner, just not to spend so much time on, on, on the rest, because we only have like 20 minutes, and I have a whole bunch of stuff to show you guys. So there we go. There's our fuzzies. And then you would come in with the blur tool and blur the mask. And I'm blurring the mask, by the way. And so this is one of the ways that you can do by actually working on the, on the mask. The other thing that you can do is create a layer on top. And on the layer on top, you can actually paint in some of the fuzzies. So maybe we paint, you know, some of these pink ones on top of there. And maybe there's like, a I don't know, like this color over here, you know, and, and then you can decide if you want to paint in the mask or paint fuzzies or do a combination of both just to get them to get them right. Cool. Let's see. There we go. So now the question about flyaway hairs. Well, what do we do? Well, if you're working with an image like this one, that can be very difficult to mask. You can actually get it to look fairly decent, and then you composite with flyaway hairs that look like that. So how do we do that? Well, to get this to look like what you saw just a moment ago, you have to fake it. It's, it's impossible to select all these flyaway hairs that are blonde up against the white background or yellow background and all kinds of colors. So that's going to be very, very difficult to select. So you can, of course, start with the remove background feature. And it does a fairly decent job. It's not terrible, but it's not great. And what I recommend that you do after you analyze your image is just get rid of the stuff that you know for sure is not going to work. So just select a regular brush and just get rid of the stuff that's too difficult to select or that you're just not happy with. So in this case, oops, I need to paint with black. In this case, I'm just going to paint away all this stuff because I just know that I can't select it. So why why bother, right? And try to keep the natural flow of the hair if possible. Oh, we're having some technical difficulties, guys. So we'll be right back in a moment.
Everybody, sorry about that. We had a few technical difficulties, but we're back. So to um, just recap, what we did here is I masked out this model. And on this layer mask, I painted with black on the areas that I didn't think I was going to need. The areas that were too difficult to select. And this is the result. Actually, I missed a little spot back here. But there you go. That's the result. So now is time to create the illusion that we actually have some detail here. So how do we do that? If you're a very good artist, and I know that some of you in the chat are very good artists, you can actually paint it in. You can you know, go in there, grab the brush tool and walk them, tell it and paint it in. For those of us that are not as talented as you guys, what you can do is go into, and I'm going to bring up a window here, um, go into Adobe Stock. Here it is. Oops. Sorry about that. Adobe Stock. Click under the drop down menu, select free and just type in um portrait if you know if you're working with a woman use type use the word woman so I'll, I'll say portrait uh if i can spell portrait woman gray background i can't spell today which is not different than most days portrait woman ba background and then you can get all these different portraits that are for free that you can license for free but look for women or people that have hair similar to the ones that you're working with up against an easy to extract background or another thing i've done is typed uh isolated hair and then you get things like this that one i probably wouldn't use i probably would use somebody with darker hair so it's easier to mask but the point is is that you can find things like this that you can turn into brushes um another thing i've done is isolated hairball i think and then you get results like this like this one would probably work great for a brush this one here even though this is not exactly the example we're working on maybe actually no it's a little bit blurry on the edges you also got to make sure that they're sharp it's sharp in the center but kind of blurry on the edges so i probably wouldn't work as well and i'm using free options obviously you can just go into images and just you know if you have licenses and this one here will, will work great as you can see i've already used it i've licensed it already so i guess i can use it again so i can go into save library and it'll save it into my library there it, there it is and you can create a brush out of that and let me find it it should be loading there it is it's coming up It'll be there in just a second. Here it is. So I can open this up. Looks like it's having some difficulties opening it up. I'm not sure why. Let me just type in for the one that I was really going to use. But the point is that this is available to you if if you need it. So this is the image that I was going to use. And for some reason, it looks like it's asking me to license it, even though I've already licensed it. But it's OK. I'll license it again. No problem. I'll license it again and I can now go up and hopefully it'll let me open it this time. And let me keep an eye out on the time. We have about 10 minutes. Great. So when you find an image that looks that is exactly what you want, it's so sad that I couldn't license this one. I'll try license it again. It doesn't matter. I'm sure that Adobe can give us some more licenses if we need them. But the point is, is that um, we ha now we have these two images to work with. So I'm going to work with this one, which is the one that I was planning on using on the stream. And since I kind of teased that I was going to make a brush out of this one, let's see if I, there we go. We'll make one out of this one. So when you download something that looks like that, you can just go into the channels panel 
and see the channel that has the most contrast between the foreground and the background. In this case, the blue channel. You can click the channel and drag it into the new channel icon to duplicate it and then go into image adjustment levels and just try to make it darker and make the background as bright as possible. Another thing you can do is go into image, apply image and apply the image onto itself. Um, in this case, I'm going to use the screen blending mode to try to remove that shadow that was there in the center because I'm not happy with it. So see how it kind of removed that shadow there in the center. It kind of destroys some of the pixels in the outside, but that's OK. Actually, you know what? No, that's not OK. What I'll do is use a different technique. I'll go into the dodge tool, make sure that highlights is selected and then I can paint away the highlights. See how I'm only targeting the the highlights, the, the brighter pixels, but not necessarily the, the darker ones. And that's really what I want. And now that I've done that, I can actually go into image, apply image and then just do multiply just to make those pixels darker. And that looks super good. And I can make this into a brush. Hold control, click on the channel icon. And if you want to be super fancy, what you can do is use this keyboard shortcut. See how that says control six. If you add alt control in the number six, it'll load that channel as a selection. And then go into the new adjustment layer icon, create a solid color, make it black. But then you have to invert it. Remember that the brush tip needs to be black. So select the layer mask, control I to invert. And there you go. We have our brush. So you can go into edit and select. Um, oh, it's disabled because I am on the brush. I need to have I need to be using like actual pixels. Edit. Why isn't it working? Let me figure that out. I'm just going to merge it all into one thing just because I can't figure out what's wrong. It's not letting me create a brush. Why is that happening? Um, mode. I'm just making sure that everything is correct. If somebody in the chat sees what I did wrong, feel free to let me know. I'm, I'm in an RGB channel. I am using eight bits. Oh, it might be because I think I know what it is. I know what the issue is. Might be too, too big of an image. Image size. Uh, yeah, it might be too big. So I'll just make it, you know, a lot smaller. I think that was the issue. Still big, but not as big. Edit. Yeah, there you go. That was the size. It was too big. Define brush preset. Uh, hairball. The point is that now we have this super cool hairball that we can use on projects like this one. And obviously, this is not going to match perfectly because I was, you know, not really planning for it to be um, for this particular image. But I can select her hair color. And, you know, when I when I paint, you see that I paint away those those flyaway hairs. See that? So that, this is answering that fly away hair, hair question, by the way. And actually, what I should have done also is gone into the shape dynamics, increase the size jitter, the angle jitter, and maybe the spacing. And let me put it up, put her up against the background that we're going to use so that we can better judge how we're putting these these strands. But see that? See how I'm just creating this this illusion that there's detail but it's not really no details just me painting these random strands of hair along the edges see that so that was um something i wasn't planning on showing what i was planning on showing you was using this lady um because look at her hair here it looks fantastic and we can do exactly the same thing just select the crop tool um i'll clear that aspect ratio and i will just select what i want on my brush which will be her hair so I can just go here like so, and we'll use that for the hair. We can go into the channels panel, select the channel with the most contrast, blue again, duplicate it, make the background as white as possible. So image adjustment levels and make it as white as possible. And then we'll make the hair strands as dark as possible, like so. And we'll use the, bur uh, the dodge tool here at the bottom just because it's a little it's too dark and I don't want that in my brush. Cool. So then that'll probably work. Control click or use the fancy keyboard shortcut. Alt control number six. Go into the layers panel and I may have the same problem that it, the file size is too big, but that's OK. We'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Control I to invert. Let's see if this is this is too big. It is not too big. So we can go into define brush preset and we can just call it hair strands or whatever you want to call it press okay 
And when I go back into my image, uh, my brushes here, you'll see the hair strands brush we just created. There it is. And I can go back into our working document here. Uh, that's not it. That's not it. Did I lose it? Did I close it? Nope, there it is. So what I can do now is create a new layer and I'll place it below our working document, which, oh, it was already below our working document. Sorry about that. Below our working document, hold Alt on Windows, Option on a Mac, sample the hair color and then paint and you get that result. But what we want to do is decrease the brush size until it matches the angle. In this case, it's facing the other way. See that? Facing the other way. So we need to go into the brush settings here, flip it on the X axis. I'll increase the spacing just so it's easier to see in the preview, but it really doesn't matter. And then I can use the arrow key to rotate and I can just paint. And what I'll do is I'm just going to paint um, and not really care about the edges on the top or the bottom. I just want to get that detail in there and then I'll worry about making it match. So you see, I'm just selecting the color and then creating all these different uh, hair strands that are the color of her hair, but it's creating the illusion that I have all that detail when I really don't. And that's really what you want to do. Another thing you can do, since it's all in one layer and these, these are just pixels, you can also go into um, the warp option, control T to transform, right click, select warp, and then just move that over. See that? See how I'm just matching now the curvature of her hair? or her head of her head to her hair is what I should say. And then I can move this accordingly so that it matches the layer better. And then that, you know, by adding these brush strokes, we created something that looks a lot more realistic and better than trying to mask this because that's just going to be impossible. So this is what I recommend that you do when you are trying to mask difficult hair that you actually take the time to paint it in either by hand or by using other images. Adobe Stock is a free resource. And obviously make sure that you don't have edges like this. If you do, you can you know paint those away by creating a layer mask and then hiding those pixels with a regular brush. So I have a regular brush way up here and I'm just gonna hide those pixels away by painting, painting with black on that mask like so. And there we go. That looks much, much better. Um, we don't have time to do the other brush I wanted to create, but I'll, I'll briefly show you what I was going to do. And this should be okay because I think you'll, you'll get the idea. So if you have an image like, like this one, and again, that was supposed to be licensed. It looks like my creative cloud is having an issue because these are images that I've already used in the past for other projects and they were already licensed, but that's okay. So what you can do is go into Adobe Stock and look for pretty much anything that you want that you think will make a good brush, bring it into Photoshop, and then you can convert it into a brush. For example, see in this case, it, it says that it's not licensed. We'll use a different image. We'll use, this one has clouds. We'll use that. Um, so what you can do is go into Photoshop, find something that you like, like this cloud here looks beautiful. Control C to copy. I'll just bring it into a new document to work with something smaller. And then I can desaturate it. Control Shift U to desaturate. Remember, with a brush, black is what stays. It's the ink. White disappears. So I want to invert that. Control I on Windows, Command I on the back. And then I can go into image adjustment levels and I can just, you know, make sure that only the cloud is visible and I can paint with white on these other edges just to make them a bit more seamless, like so. And this is not going to be perfect by any means. We don't have a lot of time, but I think you'll get the idea. Then you can go into Edit and do a defined pattern. And you can call this one like Smoke or Fog or, or whatever you want to create with it. Press OK. And all you have to do at this point... Oh, did I do a pattern overlay? I think I did a pattern, not a brush. Yeah, I, th I think that's what I did. Um, sorry. Edit, define brush preset, whatever name you want. There we go. And with black, click on the brush settings and then use the shape dynamics. Increase the size jitter, the angle jitter. In this case, you might want to adjust the spacing, anything that helps it look more like a cloud. You might also want to do a transfer where the opacity uh, jitters so that they're not, they're not all the same opacity. Some are darker than others. So when you paint, you have something that looks like this. 
and then you can create more clouds or you can reduce the brush size and maybe this is smoke coming out of a chimney or something like that you know or maybe if you're working on a scene that's you know like this house you can create a new layer set the color to white increase the brush size and now you have some some mist or some fog and you know bring down the opacity and adjust it accordingly Anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here with us at another Adobe Photoshop Bootcamp. I hope that you enjoy it. Stay with us. There's a lot more Adobe Live coming up next. And also come back with me again tomorrow for another Photoshop Bootcamp. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much, everybody. I will talk to you again tomorrow.